What is up? Welcome back to the channel. Thanks for tuning in. As you can tell, we're in our cave of a 350Z right now. I've got my sun visor up and it's a little, it's a little too big, I'm not gonna lie. Nothing feels more like a cave than this situation. But anyways, as you saw from the title of today's video, we're finally gonna be fixing this. This terrible, terrible situation. And we have a single din radio and honestly, it's not the worst single din radio I've ever had. I actually like this cubby right here. I put my phone in here, my wallet. Obviously, you know, we have the up top storage as well. But in my opinion, it's time for something new. This is an Alpine. UTE-73BT. It's been nothing but great. It's got Bluetooth and all the great things you want. I'm probably going to put it in the Miata because the one we have in there right now is not very good. But this is what we replaced it with. The Sony XAV AX6000. This is a capacitive touchscreen. It's just a beast, honestly. It has everything you want plus the HDMI out, which is just great. So definitely watch the future video because I have something really cool coming up that I want to do now that we're going to have a screen in the car with an HDMI. So yeah, so watch for that video coming up but let's get into the install because I'm so tired of looking at this single din and I just want to see this beautiful screen we got a nice bezel for it I was kind of forced to do the head unit right now because I was gonna put the carbon fiber in this week but I realized once I put the carbon on it's gonna be so stuck to the dash to take everything apart again I do not want to risk cracking any of that carbon so so I just pulled the trigger and bought the head unit I don't know I feel like I spend so much time in here like time that you guys do not even see when I go to the, like go get fast food and I sit in my car for like two hours and plan these YouTube videos or just think about life and watch other youtubers stuff like that I spend so much time in my car that it's time to finally you know make it nice in here because I feel like the outside of the car is great but you know this is all scratched up this could be better and the carbon fiber is waiting so but anyways that's enough talking let's get into it okay so seriously I think the suckiest thing about this is it's 96 degrees and I got to pull the terminal on the battery right now so this AC honestly I've been running the AC to get it as cold as I can in here because you're gonna have to turn the car off for a while hopefully the install's not gonna take too long I'm thinking like 30 minutes so all right. Dang, man. I think that's backwards now that I just realized. Okay. All right, so let's start this process. Take this thing off. Got my water just in case. I guess you're supposed to just pull right here without breaking anything. Oh my goodness. Mm -hmm. Johnny, you've never taken your dash apart before? No, I didn't, I didn't want to ever have to, but be very careful. I mean, this thing is literally paper thin. Boom, should probably clean that while it's out. So once that piece is out, there's gonna be some screws, but we need to take this off. So if you open the cubby, Take this plastic little tray out of there. There's these clips. Slide them towards you. They pop right out. Just like so. Now there's some screws way back there and I was having nightmares about this. I really don't want to drop one of these. Oh my goodness, this is not a magnetic. This is my nightmare. It's happening, you're witnessing it with me. This is not a magnetic screwdriver. What the heck, man? Are you serious? I guess we'll get it out when we pull the whole thing, right? Well, two more screws down here. Those are the same size, so it doesn't really, can't really get them mixed up. And then way under here, I don't know if you can see, let me, this screw. And there's one more back here, I don't know if you can see it. Those gotta come out. Now, I've heard they don't have to, but it helps when having a little bit more space to deal with moving things around. So those are different screws, so make sure you're not, you don't get those confused with the others. I'm sorry, there's a dog barking in the distance. I don't blame him, it's like 100 degrees out here. I hope his owners let him in soon. Oh, 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 I almost lost it, I almost lost it. Oh, there's like all types of wires and stuff. So I don't think we pull it out, I think we just pull this down a little bit so we can get in. All right, so I heard we... Someone get that dog. You come up here, you pull this forward. Oh my goodness. Everything kind of just pops forward, so. Okay, so now this part's gonna be difficult because they're, these gauges have a connector on the back of them, so I'm gonna try and get that. I don't know how well the GoPro will capture it. So it was actually the easiest pin of all of them. I pulled it forward, and it was literally on the side right here where my pinky is, slid out instantly. So if we pull this forward, whoa. So let me see if I can just take these, take this out of here, pull the microphone out. Is this just pull out? Jesus, we're free. There it is. So it looks like it's just held on with four screws and I think ours is gonna slide right in. Mm. 
There it is. Just put this in here for now. Definitely gonna put that in the Miata. Here we are. This is the Sony AX6000. I already bought this bezel and I already installed it. So this bezel, I'm gonna have a link in description. And this is basically the piece you need. The head unit sits inside. As you can see, this receiver is sitting inside of this bezel. And this bezel is what fills out the rest of the hole because the screens aren't all the same size. And sometimes you have this, they don't fully fill out the hole. So you need this bezel piece. I'm, I'm waiting to take this film off until the very end, but it just fits right inside here. I, I don't know if you can see, but um, yeah, once we take it off, you'll see what I mean. But let's put this in here right now. Now, so I'm just gonna drop this in. Okay, all the film is out. Screw these in. This is cool. It literally matched up perfectly right where the, the old one was. All right, so without taking the film off, this is the first look. Oh my goodness. Here, I don't know if you can tell, but do you see what I mean? How the bezel fills the outside of the hole? Because if it was just the screen in here, all this extra you know black plastic would be empty. So it definitely needs it. Oh, it's gonna look so good. It's gonna look so good. Whoa, that's cool. If you've ever wanted to see how that works. Well, now it's time for wiring everything. So let's pull out his old OEM harness. So like I said, when I bought that bezel piece I was just talking about, it actually came with these two OEM harness pieces. They just clip out of here and they only run to about right here. They're only about six inches long on both sides. And then this black piece right here is what you get with the Sony. And then it's up to you once you buy the bezel and buy the Sony to take the Sony piece right here and then take the two pieces that come with the bezel and then match all the wires to connect them. It's really simple, honestly. Like it looks insane and it's just, it just looks like way too much, but honestly, it is so simple. Like you can even see right here, black and purple, black and purple, 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 blue and white, blue and white, yellow, yellow. And each of these wires has a different thing. Like orange is illumination. Blue can be sub. It's basically uh, 12 volts. Um, yellow is pretty much all the power. You can tell it's power just because of how big it is. And then red also is power. It's just cool because all these different wires do different things. Like these, this side is pretty much all your speakers. And this side is all of your infotainment slash um, basically the screen. So, all right, let's, let's pop these out. Oh, that's where he put his ground. Interesting. Interesting. Hmm. All right, look at that. Old wiring harness. New wiring harness. And instead of having just one ground, we have two grounds on this one. Boom and boom. Very similar, very similar. Probably put them in those exact same spots, just one right here and one right here. All right, let's plug them in, let's plug them in. We're gonna take all the old stuff and drop it down here with the head unit, just so we can use it again later. All right, so like I was talking about, these two pieces came with the bezel. This piece is the one with, that came with the head unit. Super easy. These are both different sizes, so you can't really mess them up. Just don't jam anything, you know? One. You know what I need to do? I, I should not leave these wires exposed like that. Where's my electrical tape? All right, so I taped my wires that I don't need with electrical tape just so they're sealed and covered. I'm gonna plug all these in because just like so. We're getting there, we're getting there. I'm actually excited. <laughs> Honestly, it's cool doing it ourselves too because I had like half of a mind to just take it to Audio Evolution and have them install it. But I don't know, I felt like I would challenge myself. Now, does this just fit inside of there? Oh, that's clean. Oh, that's clean. Now I get this one, do the same exact thing. So what I'm doing is I have these pieces that I've crimped. I'm just sliding them up right here where the bolt holds this piece. There's actually a piece of metal. There's actually a piece of metal on both sides that run down and it looks like it's actually, I mean, I don't know if it's meant for a ground, but it, it fits perfectly. So I'm just gonna take this, slide it up into the plastic just like that. So once I screw this thing together, those are grounded. All right, so I'm gonna pull everything we need out of here. This is the Sony microphone. Let me see if it's, I think it's identical to the one we're using. It is. All right, we're just gonna leave the one we're using in. The coolest thing about this head unit, kind of like the other one, is it looks singled in. It doesn't have this giant metal box on the back, so all of this space down here is perfect for storing wires. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna start hooking everything up slowly. But one thing I need to double check is make sure that this is gonna go on here. Yeah. See this? I was worried about this piece. I think I need to cut these off with the Dremel. All right, so I just took the Dremel and cut these little tips off because they were coming down about this far on both sides. Do not need those. And it even says in the instructions that a lot of the dashboards are different. So to modify the bezel, how it would fit in your car. And now it's time to start putting everything back together. So honestly, this is the fun part and the easy part. So it looks intimidating. We're gonna do this wiring harness last. All right, so this I know was inside of that other head unit. And then one thing I do not know, this part right here. Do 
know what this is? This was not connected to anything, I don't believe. So, because I didn't take that apart. So, I'm just going to leave it. I don't think it goes to anything. We're going to start plugging everything together, though. Let's just do this big wiring harness. Get this out of the way. Boom, we're connected to the vehicle. We're connected to the vehicle. Grounds are in. Let's take our microphone. So that microphone that's mounted up there on the visor is right here. The person that owned the car before ran it through the dash, which is awesome. And it just goes right here where it says mic. And then we have, so before, this is a kind of a short cable. So I I'm gonna plug that in last, but let's put everything else together. So this, I don't have anything that connects to this, but I'm gonna leave it with the head unit inside of there just to tuck back. This also, I don't have anything connected with it. This would directly wire into if we had any buttons on the steering wheel and we don't. So I'm just gonna put that in there. And then next we have this GPS module, like I was talking about earlier. So they give you this metal sheet to increase the distance of your GPS signal. Say about right there. Press it down right there. Just a metal sheet. And take this off of here. And stick it right in the middle. Just like that. Boom. I mean, that's pretty clean. All right, so I just ran this GPS thing down the side of this, up underneath and into here. Check it out, this is the end of the cable. Now I'm gonna run these, this HDMI cable basically in the exact same spot. I'm gonna run it down this way into this glove box right here. So wish me luck. It is, I mean, I'm going up underneath here right now, upside down, and it's just so hard to see anything. And it does not help that it is like 100 degrees out here right now. All right, I'll see you in a second, I'm going under. Mm -hmm. Okay. Hmm. All right, so HDMI has been run down the side into this and into the side of the glove box. You'll have to watch my next video to see why I'm running an HDMI cable down here. Oh, I gotta put this piece back. But yes, you're not gonna wanna miss it. It's pretty awesome. All right, you guys, so we have everything. We got the micro HDMI. We have the USB-C and also the GPS thing all wound through or run through the bottom of the dashboard. So I'm gonna plug this in here, boom. So my GoPro's at like 15% battery. So I'm just gonna push everything back in. Literally all I have to do is connect this to that and then this to that, like just those two pieces and we're done. All right, so my GoPro died, but check it out. We got everything put back together except the shift knob. But look at this, we got the screen in here. It looks so good with this bezel and I cannot wait to take this plastic off. Like I've been waiting to do this entire time. GoPro's dead, but are you, are you ready? <sighs> I'm excited. I'm, I'm honestly, honestly really excited. I really hope we did everything correctly. Let's plug the battery back in. All right, this is a big moment. I'm gonna turn the car on for the first time. Oh my God. Wait, but, but first, but first, you already know what we have to do. Oh my gosh. That is beautiful. Now, of course, I know I know all this is nasty. Like I said at the beginning of the video, carbon fiber. Imagine, soon enough, soon enough. Are you ready? Oh my gosh, here, let's, let's close the doors. My gosh, it looks so good. Okay, okay. Oh my God, don't mind the wipers. Yo! Language, okay, okay, okay. I'm gonna set this up, one second. I just have to say, while I'm setting this up, the touch screen is amazing. I'm so picky about my touch screens. I cannot believe how good it looks. A screen, a screen, all apps. All right, I got wireless CarPlay now, which is so cool. Look at this screen. It works so well. Waze, we got music, check it out, playing some Meteor. Oh man. This has got to be seriously one of the coolest things we've done to this car. I know we painted it, which is pretty awesome, but as far as just like quality of life goes, I mean, I spent so much time inside of this car. I'm actually stoked about this. And it's got wireless car play. It was kind of expensive, it was 550, but 100% worth it, 100% worth. And I've only been in here for five seconds, so man. And what we have planned is just as insane. Like, I cannot wait for you to see it. So hit the subscribe button. I'll probably drop that video next, honestly, because I'm just so excited. Man, this is super 
super cool. Definitely, if you've been looking to get a screen of any type, go ahead, I mean, seriously, just do it, honestly. And I'm a stickler about my touch screens and just the quality of how things feel. The one that's like $150 cheaper than this is a resistive touch screen, and this one's capacitive touch screen. They're basically the same exact unit, just one is resistive, one is capacitive. Resistive touch screens are like the outdoor touch screens you see where you have to press down. And you could honestly, you could press down with anything. Like if you have your phone, you could tap the screen with your phone as long as you push hard enough. The capacitive touch screen is like your iPhone to where you almost barely have to touch it and it still senses your finger. So anything that's conductive, it just feels so good to the touch to be able to move it back and forth without having to apply much pressure. So anyways, thank you so much for tuning in. Hit the subscribe button if you haven't yet already to join the family. Hit the thumbs up button if you enjoyed this video and want to see more installs like this. And we have a full carbon fiber dashboard install and that's not even the video I'm super excited about. So hit the subscribe button so you do not miss when those videos go live and I'll see you then. Peace out.